you remember when you would see this in church, like up on the altar table, and you knew it meant it was Communion Sunday? I remember as a kid, this was the coolest Sunday for me because this was Snack Sunday, right? You got to eat food in church. I remember we would take bets on those Sundays, right? What was under the cloth? Was it the dry, really thin pita bread? Was it some sort of tiny wafer? Or were we gonna get the good stuff, right? King's Hawaiian bread. And here's the thing. I knew we did communion because Jesus did it, because he told us to do it. I mean, we talked about him, we heard scriptures as we were preparing for communion, all that stuff was there, but I didn't really get it. I mean, ask yourself, do you really understand what communion's all about? How many times have you taken that sacrament and not really even understood exactly what was going on? The truth is, I think most church people don't know what communion's all about. But today I hope to change that. And if that's something you're interested in, stick around. Now, before we get started, if you don't mind, please take a moment to go down and click that subscribe button. And then while you're down there, go ahead and click that little bell next to it so you get notified each week when we put out a new video. So today, we're going to ask the question, what is communion and why do we do it? And what I'm going to do is give you seven important things that are happening in communion that hopefully will open your eyes to this experience and allow God to work inside of you and transform you in brand new ways. Now let me just say up front that I'm a United Methodist pastor and this is a United Methodist understanding of communion, but many of these things cross the denominations. Many of these things are general beliefs that Christians have about communion. One of the first significant things that's happening during communion is an act of thanksgiving. Communion is an opportunity to give thanks to God. In fact, it's a reminder to give God thanks. In the United Methodist Church, one of the ways that we do this is through something called the Great Thanksgiving. This is a prayer that we have before communion, which celebrates all the ways that God has been present and faithful throughout history. And it talks about how even though we haven't been faithful to God, God has always been faithful to us. The Great Thanksgiving is an opportunity for us to celebrate God's faithfulness and grace through the life of Jesus. That this bread and juice we consume aren't just bread and juice. They're gifts of God's grace meant to fulfill us and sustain us and nourish us spiritually. It's a reminder of how God has and will give everything for us. And we see that in Jesus. And the great Thanksgiving is an opportunity to remember that God has been and still is present with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That as we share in this meal, God is right here with us. Communion is this beautiful reminder of how much God loves us. And it's a call to give thanks for that. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I know one of the biggest things that I struggle with in my faith is not giving thanks enough. Because it's so easy to come to God and ask for things or demand things through our prayers. And when God doesn't answer, when we get frustrated at the fact that God didn't do what we wanted, it's so easy to overlook all the times that God did. And so communion is a moment to catch ourselves, to pause and just be thankful for all the things that God has done and is doing. Another significant reason that we celebrate communion is fellowship. Now, I know that fellowship can be a kind of a churchy word sometimes, but really what I mean by that is communion is an opportunity for Christians to come together, right? It binds us together in our common faith. We share in bread from one loaf. We share in juice or wine from one cup. And it's this reminder that we are all united together through our common relationship with Jesus. But it goes beyond this. Right? We're not just united with all the people sharing in communion at that one particular worship service. We're united with everyone in our church who shares communion. In fact, we're united with everyone sharing communion throughout the world. The church isn't just a bunch of different communities. The Bible calls the church a body. Right? We Christians are the hands and feet and belly button of Jesus. And we're united together with him as the head of that body. We're united in doing his work. We're united in our love for him. We're united in our common salvation. And this meal is an opportunity to experience that unity. In fact, this touches on another important part of communion, and that's confession. When we share in communion, we repent of the ways that we've wronged one another. We share signs of peace with one another. When we share in communion, we set aside time to let go of grudges, to extend grace, and to experience the unity that God originally intended for us to have. Tied to this is another significant part of communion, and that's something called eschatology. Now, I know that's a big fancy church word, but what it suggests is that when we share in communion, we're not just joining together with the people here on earth. 
We're joining together in this common celebration with everyone who's ever gone before us. We're sharing this meal with those who now feast in heaven, with those who got to eat with Jesus while he was alive. The Holy Spirit bonds us together through this common meal and our common faith. And what this does for us is it reminds us that the communion meal we share now is just a foretaste of this great heavenly banquet awaiting us later on. The 23rd Psalm says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. It's a reminder that there is this much greater feast awaiting us someday. And God loves us enough to give us a taste of it now. And yet, while communion is an opportunity to look forward to what awaits us, it's also an opportunity to remember what has happened before. Communion is an opportunity for us to remember that last supper that Jesus had with his disciples, the moment he told them and us to continue to do this in remembrance of him. It's an opportunity to remember how he went to the cross and died for us and that the bread we eat is his broken body, the cup we share is his blood poured out for us. And it's also a time for us to remember his resurrection, that this meal is a promise that, that death is not the end, but because Jesus conquered the grave, because he rose again, that we too can have new life in Jesus. And yet while communion is a time to remember, it's also so much more than just a memorial service. Because as Christians, what we believe is that Jesus is there in that meal. Some denominations believe that the bread and the cup are actually physically the body and the blood of Jesus. As Methodists, we don't believe that, but we do believe that they're more than just bread and juice. The point is that we believe that Jesus is really present in this meal, not just in a memory, but he's there. This actually leads to another significant part of communion, which is that we don't just remember Jesus' sacrifice, we experience it. When we share in communion, we believe that this is more than just bread and juice, right? We're sharing in his body and his blood, which is why as Methodists, we call communion a means of grace. It's a way for us to experience God's grace in a powerful, tangible way. When we come together and celebrate communion, we're celebrating the fact that God's grace is just as real, just as present, just as powerful today as it was the moment Christ died that the power of the tomb and the power of the cross have never diminished. In fact, John Wesley referred to communion as a converting ordinance. And what that means is he believed that somebody who didn't even know Jesus could come and experience communion and God's grace would be so powerful that they could give their life to Christ in that moment just because of that experience. Jesus commanded us to share in communion because he knew that this was a unique and powerful way to experience God's grace that could change us. But, we also have to remember that communion is not just about us. Communion isn't just an opportunity for God to serve us. It's an opportunity for us to make ourselves a holy and living sacrifice to God. In other words, we're giving ourselves to God in this moment. We're surrendering ourselves to be Jesus' disciples, to let him be our Savior and our Lord. Right, And that word Lord means that we serve him in everything we do. Our lives are devoted to him. And communion is a moment when we come and we recommit to that. And here's the thing, what makes all that possible is the final important part of communion. And that's the action of the Holy Spirit. When we come together and share communion, God's Holy Spirit isn't just present. God's Spirit is active, right? God's Holy Spirit is transforming those elements from bread and juice into something more. God's Holy Spirit is transforming us in that moment. And it's the same Holy Spirit that God promises will be with us when we leave this communion table and go out and serve in the world. It's this same Holy Spirit that Jesus is talking about when he says that we will do even greater things than he did because of the Spirit that he's sending us. So as you can see, communion is way more than just snack time, right? It's this part of our faith that Jesus commanded us to practice. It's something that's been done by every Christian since the very beginning. It's this unique and powerful opportunity to experience God's grace. And unfortunately, it's something we way too often take for granted. And so the next time you come together and share communion, remember what it is that you're doing and what God's doing in that moment. Remember that this is a time for thanksgiving and fellowship and repentance. It's a time to remember Jesus' sacrifice and share in that sacrifice. It's a powerful work of God's Holy Spirit that can transform you and others. And it is a beautiful foretaste of what is yet to come. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, please take a moment to go down below and click that thumbs up to say you like the video. And then while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you get these videos each and every week. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time and God bless.